So today we have a bit of a different episode because we are joined by someone who homeschools their kids. And for me, schooling was a horrendous experience. So I thought, why not get someone on who is homeschooling their kids? And also, interestingly, we actually made this happen through a YouTube comment section, which is quite cool. So thank you for joining us today, Katty. Um, do you want to give a, lot, a little introduction about who you are? Okay, um, what you mean, my channel, or do you mean about my... Just can you everything, that out? everything. Um, basically, um, I'll talk about my homeschooling first, shall I, or... Yeah, so, like, well, just, like, you know, about yourself, like, do you have two kids, three kids? I have uh, two children, um, one of them that I'm homeschooling, um, he's not able to attend mainstream school due to various variety of reasons. And my other son who can um, go to school and to be honest, he actually, um, the way they teach at the school, he's learning really well. So I'm kind of like in the middle, you know, because I've got one child who doesn't understand or isn't able to do the normal, typical mainstream way and another one that does learn that way. Wow. So can you can you explain like um, like why you're homeschooling one of your okay, kids? I'm- Okay, I'm homeschooling one of my sons because he wasn't able to turn up to school um, every day. Um, we tried various different things to help him to get into school, but the school wasn't um, sticking to their words in meetings about what they're going to do to help for anxiety and stuff. Um, to the point once where um, we actually had had actually agreed to the school that we could take him out at lunchtime because he finds it hard to socialise, right? So I said, am I able to take him out and then he can have lunch with me and then go back in? And the next day, when after they agreed that, they decided to tell him he's not allowed to do that, right? He had a massive meltdown. Um, I didn't know where my son was. He lied to me and my mum and said that they didn't know where my son was and they told him he wasn't allowed out. And that was actually the last day that he ever went to mainstream school. Wow. Because he, his mental health was so bad um, that I really, well, I knew already, but his mental health is way more important than any education. I'm sorry. So that was just kind of the last thing that happened at the school. But there was, we kept going in for meetings and nothing, everything they were said they was going to do for him to help him, the mental health was not being met at all. And even teachers were shouting and intending him just because she got mental health problems. She actually said this in front of the whole class doesn't mean you can get away with it in year seven. That's disgusting. Wow. So do you have a lot? So is like the situation that he was struggling a lot and the school system was so flawed around helping that struggle that you had to homeschool? Yeah, this is just after all the lockdowns, by the way. So they'd left primary school and then they'd gone to obviously secondary school. So it's a major change. Decided to put him in a class with none of his other friends out of the whole of the school, out of 60 children. He had no one there. And because of COVID, they wasn't allowed to go to like different, um, you know, obviously you'd have different lessons for different subjects. Well, it went after COVID ha- was happening in that. Um, they had to obviously, uh, they had to stay like in the same classroom. So he didn't know anyone. He had all these problems with mental health, right? And they were shouting at him for silly things. Then they were trying to say, okay, we'll give you time out for 15 minutes, yeah? And they were trying to force him to read when he was literally having a meltdown on a panic attack, it's pathetic. They wasn't and shouting at him and trying to make him do a speech. I was like, excuse me, I can't, it's hard enough to get him to come in. And now you're trying to make him do a speech in front of the whole class. Wow. That's, you know, it, it, mm, that's a case like I hear so often people in schools, especially in the UK, just completely abandon when there's issues like that. Like in my own school, I remember there were kids who struggled and I was one of those kids who did struggle, but not to... Well, I I did struggle a lot, but I managed to go through it. I mean, I was very depressed. I was absolutely, I hated myself, hated life. And there's no infrastructure in the school system to actually help those people. And there's so many schools that posture as helping. So like the school I went to was, it always talked about, you know, kindness and all of this. But when it boils down to it, there isn't the support system. So do you want to explain like why and how no sorry you've already kind of explained why but how has the homeschooling that you've been doing going 
Well, before I say that, I want to say one thing. One thing that I noticed in these meetings is that um, that this the school, and I'm not saying it's all schools, but where my son was, I realised that the lit- the teachers in the I'm going to say I don't care with sexes to my son because he get turned into a man. I can get over it. And I actually said to him, "You wouldn't say that to a girl, would you?" So I just made him really angry. It was horrible. That's a good point as well. Like there is a big um, difference, I think, in the way certain people are treated. Like I remember in school there would be a a guy, right, one of the senior people would scream at, um, like, a guy, and, well, I don't know, guy, probably 15 years old or whatever, but it'd be in absolute tears and then carry on screaming, but when a, if there's a girl and they're crying, that there's almost like, oh, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And that's true, and that's another broader point about how the whole school system is failing men miserably. Like, it really is failing men. Like, when you look at how people do in school, in college, in secondary school, primary school, like across the board, it it's just not built. Generalizing here for a kind of a more I know masculine um, system in a sense. Um, and yeah, when like, sorry, I don't want to butt in. I was just gonna say sorry that I was gonna say that I can see that because obviously I've got two sons, so I wouldn't have probably seen it before, but I've seen it now, and I've seen that um, many times, even at the primary school. School's great, by the way, but obviously bullying happens everywhere. But I'd noticed, like, if a girl was bullying my son or something, and one day one of the girls did, and they actually hit him over the head, a massive book. When I would go in and tell the teacher about it, and just say, oh, you know, can you tell her not to do that again, please, tell my son and that, she'd be like, she actually said this. Oh well, it's probably just their hormones, and I was so angry. I went into the reception and I said, I want to make a complaint because who the hell would say that if a boy hit a girl? Oh, it's just his hormones. Mm. Like what the hell? Many times things like that have happened, so my eyes are really awake to that now. Mm. Yes, this there is a massive difference, and the fact that there still hasn't been any structural change to the this rigid system over years is just mind-boggling. You got technology, you got everything now, and we're still stuck to this rigid worker, like factory worker system. It's just, like I think it's appalling, really. Um, and the fact that millions of kids go through that every single day, you know, five days a week, it's killer. Yeah, and also, I don't know if I'm sure you know about this, but when you're nowadays, they're telling children if, say, like a bully hurts someone, even at primary school, they say they have to punish both of them. And if that child sticks up for themselves, they get, to be honest, even worse of a punishment. The amount of times I got cold called in and all my son was doing was defending himself. In the end, I had to go to the playground and look through the actual, you know, looking out from the outside, looking in, even though didn't ladies didn't like it at all, to make sure he was safe because he was getting bruises and marks all over him. And this one child uh, that kept att- attacking him. And in the end, I don't care. I just told him when he does it, just do it back to him. I don't care if you even get kicked out. I was fed up with it and loads of parents were feeling the same because they kept get, getting told the same thing. You can't, you're not, your child is not allowed to defend themselves. What is that? <laughs> wow. Damn. So That's going everywhere. And, and I realised they did that because they want people um, when they're adults to not defend themselves either. So they're trying to put it in when they're young. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you could, well, you'd have to, um, that's a question of intentions and the system itself. I don't know if that, yeah, I, I don't know. Cause like that means someone's premeditating that and trying to create people to act a certain way. But then I guess. Yeah, I believe they are. Sorry. I've asked, Cause why else would you let a child be on the floor being kicked by a group of boys and tell them they're not allowed to defend themselves when there's no dinner lady around? Why else? They should be able to defend themselves, shouldn't they? Well, it, it might just have been maybe that specific school, do you think? I'm not sure. I've read a lot online. I'm not saying it is all schools, but it's mm. just something I've realised they don't like to stand up for yourself, mm. defend yourself. But anyway, I thought I'd add that in there. Right, interesting point. Uh, do you want to talk about like how how homeschooling is going? Um, yeah, so basically what I did was um, I... I looked at the timetable that he had at his mainstream school and then I made one with him as with, with him helping me as well to to see what what subjects first what he wanted to do for what he wanted to do because he already knew what he wanted to do at college yeah what he needed to get in and so he didn't do extra stuff that he didn't want to do or that would overwhelm him to make it as what's the word less stress as possible 
so he can learn more and do other things beside that that he enjoys like going out in nature and animals and stuff like that and music um, he likes baking and things like that so it's like I'm still incorporating some of the stuff because he wants to go to college and do these things but we're not doing like said so doing eight GCs I don't know how many people do he only needs to do four apparently or five so he just chosen them already in year seven and year eight he was going for all the subjects he likes and then he would just he just chose the ones that he wanted to do wow so it's like a backup plan if you see what I mean because I still think it's quite important he he dropped English literature he doesn't like poetry any of that so he's just doing English language in the colleges where I am they only care about English and maths English language that's all they care about you 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 could be awful at the subject you're taking, but as long as you've got English and maths, they, that's all they care about. Mm, that's true. Like, when I went to college, which was only a few months ago, when when I joined, I scraped the past, but there are people in my class who they didn't even pass maths and people who didn't even pass English. And technically, they shouldn't have been allowed on my course. They were allowed on the course because it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does. it's good to have English and maths um, because it helps you in applying for certain things and college, but... It's like if you get a nine in maths or you have a bunch of other GCSEs, it really doesn't matter that much as long as you have four or five. You can get into a lot of courses and also colleges are incentivized to actually get people's in for funding. So it's yeah. it's kind of what they teach you in secondary school about. It. <coughs> it is kind of completely like flawed. So speaking of the homeschooling, so day to day, what does what does it look like? Um. So on monday I'd, he does um music and he gets private music lessons because he loves playing on keyboard and piano and that and he excels in that all his anxiety has really been helped by music um and then he does um, biology because he doesn't want to do the other sciences and um, i use websites online and also visual things and make games as well you see what i mean to make it more fun and then um then he does geography but it's one hour each and then he's like half an hour break so Monday's three lessons, and then like on Tuesday, um, he would he has private English language lesson that I got him um, because to be honest, he I wanted to pay for one lesson that he really enjoys, which is music, and one that he struggles with, and I chose English language because I realised whether people like it or not, when you are better at English, it does help you in every other subject. If you, I mean, comprehension wise, I'm not talking about poetry and all these other things. I just mean understanding the text. I'm just, I'm dyslexic. So when I started learning English more, it really helped me in all areas of life. So I'm paying for that. And then after that, he has um, his actual proper music lesson, if you see what I mean, who, where he sets more homework. So I'm working alongside some private tutors and doing the rest myself. Wednesday, he has the whole day off because he gets really overwhelmed. And I realized that. He wasn't take. He's not going to take anything in if he's overwhelmed. If you see what I mean. So he has a nice day just to chill out. And sometimes we'll go out and do things like um, go. He likes going to lakes and stuff. He likes geese, ducks, swans, and all things like that. So we go to different farms and all things like that. And then um, on Thursday, um, well, my other son's doing his eleven plus. Um, so, and I realised a lot of the work for the eleven plus for the um, English and maths is very similar to the, only at the bottom, but the foundation of um, English language and maths. So all the work he's getting for 11 plus, I scan it in and I give to my son to do on English on one day. And then the Friday he would do maths and he'll get the maths. And that's helped him a lot. So basically my son that's doing 11 plus is teaching me maths and then I'm teaching it down to, up to my other son. Wow. See what I mean? We're like helping each other out here as we go along. Mm, that's a, that's a amazing system. Um, about like the actual teaching so I know in certain places in America they have it's very pro homeschooling so there's like su there's really good funding so like you get the equivalent funding have you got any funding by the government to actually homeschool like how has the support system in doing that been not really good at all to be honest you just you just left to yourself but luckily for me like I I've just I don't know I find it easy to get the information so I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a good teacher but I think I'm good at finding the information because I love research and then I'll I'm helping him no matter what you see like I'm not going to give up so there's so, been zero yeah. help by the government to homeschool um, yeah basically what happens is so once you decide that you don't want your child to go to the mainstream school you have to write a letter into the school um, and then you have to write a letter to the council and explain I told him everything you know that 
everything they were do- they weren't doing the school. Um, and then they rang me, and they obviously I did actually want them to come around and play a pay a home visit, but they can't because of COVID and that. So they just rang me up and they said I need to take pictures of all the work he's been doing. And they was really happy with what I was doing. But one thing to add here is that I real I didn't realise this until they rang me is that a lot of people that homeschool they don't do any of the curriculum at all. So you don't actually have to follow it at all if you don't want to. The only reason I'm doing it is because um he says that he wants to go to college, he wants to do these things, and I don't want him then to feel like, Oh, I wish I'd done it. Do you see what I mean? Yes, yeah, so you're getting like the best of both. You're taking care of yeah. him like mentally, so because yeah. the system is just atrocious yeah. on waiting list for mental health for nearly two or three years for my son it is ridiculous wow. i'm not trying to be nhs but it is awful i mean thank god i got him out of the school because god knows where he would be right now if he didn't if he was still in the school like you said about depression mm-hmm. they don't take it seriously it's terrible what well, would you say to someone who says something like um everyone hates school a bit um like homeschooling's bad like what do you say to the person who thinks homeschooling's kind of ridiculous and these people should just have to go to school what's your message to them i think the people that say it's ridiculous are the people that don't want to spend time actually trying to teach their child and would rather someone else to do it i'm sorry i'm just going to say it how many parents don't want to help their kids with homework they can't be asked if it homeschool is hard but if you actually want to do it and actually study like, I literally am decided I'm going to take up a few courses to learn more myself to teach my son. Like, if you actually are passionate about it for your kids, you will do it. Wow. So... Sometimes, I, I know it sounds harsh, but I'm being serious. I think some people that say that it's bad is because they know deep down that they wouldn't be able to do it, right? They, they Because you have to have a lot of patience to teach a child, especially your own children. Sometimes they feel like they can get around things because, you know, you know it's, they're not in school. But... It takes a lot of time and energy, but a lot of people can do it and are passionate. And yeah, there are going to be bad people that do it, I reckon, who can't be bothered. They're probably just, you know, that's why the council is meant to come round and make sure that you are teaching them something. But if you actually do it properly, you know, some children with mental health problems, they can't go to school. And other children, like my other son, for example, um, I think if he actually does better in a mainstream school. I've seen what he was like in um, the lockdowns and that. And he, when he went back to school, he flourished. I'm being serious. He loves socialising. He loves the way that they teach at primary school here. Yeah? He loves English and math. He loves science. He loves physics. He loves graphs, statistics and all of that. That's his thing. Like, I can see that he'll probably love secondary school as well. I'm not saying he's going to agree with what they're teaching, by the way. But he likes the way it's set up. So I I can see it from the other side, from my other son. But for my other son that like I'm homeschooling, it's hell for him, you know? No way. And it's not worth it. Your mental health is more important than education any day. I completely agree. And also there's the other point there about how people assume that school is education, but in many cases it's the complete opposite. Like I went to school my whole life, learnt very little about mm-hmm. things I was interested in. Like literally like struggled throughout the whole time nursery primary secondary school the worst time felt terrible went to college then pursuing things i enjoyed taught myself um while i didn't get on with anyone in my college which is unfortunate um i when i actually left college i was self-teaching myself everything and i love educating i educate myself every day every second i'm educating myself but people always assume that education means this conformed, rig- rigid structure of the school system. So I think it's like a powerful message for people who are listening to hear the, no, the other see, side. No, I see that from that side as well, because I'm, I'm dyslexic and in school, like you, I didn't learn nothing. And they just put me in like the group for stupid. They look at us like we're stupid. We didn't get any help. We didn't get diagnosed with dyslexia or anything like that. But then when I left school and then when I had kids and I decided to go back and do my English and my maths when I was like 28, right? Um, and I had obviously a different teacher at college. They, they, the same thing, they got out the books, the textbooks and all that for maths, right? And I was so overwhelmed, I was like, oh my God, I can't do it. And then I just shoved them in the bin, right? And I thought, I'm just gonna learn on YouTube, right? And then at the end of the, the year, my maths teacher was like, what the hell's happened to you? And I'm my English teacher, how have you figured? Because they said both thought I was gonna fail. I literally realized in that time that, three, few, how does I say this? By having dyslexia means that my I think outside the box, and by thinking outside the box, I was then able to learn and figure out how I learn. I think they need to teach children how they learn 
they have to find out how that child learns and not everyone learns the same way that's such a good point because youtube yeah, yeah like youtube is the best i think university there is in a sense like yeah. the amount of things you can self-taught but it's not taught that it's you know go to school go to secondary school go to college go to university get someone else to teach you but what isn't taught is oh there's this amazing online course oh there's this body of knowledge that you can access anywhere from the thing in your pocket that's not taught but what and the fact that there's so many people out there who are just in so much pain going to school it's just horrendous and the fact that you said that you've had zero government support in homeschooling well little to none from how you described it it's just atrocious because there's places like florida where if you homeschool the government will literally pay you the exact amount of money that goes towards school so like in the uk i think it's a one secondary school student gets allocated i think twenty thousand in resources i think each bearing in mind if that was homeschooling that would be way less so it would actually reduce the taxpayer money if more people were homeschooled yeah i've i've been really stressed out because i i used to have really bad anxiety and i've literally got over I'm like over my anxiety i've killed my anxiety basically um and so i'm now ready to work but because i want to work so i can get loads of money to help my son who needs homeschooling because i want to get more resource um information and more classes for and stuff and mental health and everything but I'm not able to do it because I I'm homeschooling do you see the difficulty I'm in and there's not much help so yeah that that they need to do more for people that actually homeschool it's terrible the fact that there's just not support I, I literally get depressed because I feel like a failure for my son at times wow. so I feel like I want to do more but I can't but I know I'm doing way more than probably most parents are doing but at the same time, I knew if I had a job, a full-time job, I would get paid way more money and I could help. Do you see what I mean? Mm. You can't eat. Because the thing is, is that from, for um, when you're on a waiting list in the NHS, I often think, oh, if I had money, this is why money is good in that way. I could go privately and get him all this mental health treatment. Do you see what I mean? It costs money to get this treatment. Mm. That's really sad to hear. And like... I ju it's just one of those things where it's so frustrating the fact that there's no one out there that I've seen who's actually campaigning people need to have a choice of what they do with their kids because it's like yeah. the way you described it seems so difficult homeschooling time resources energy which I like full commend uh, full commence to you like in doing that but the fact that there's not support in doing that and people are just chucked in this institution where it cripples people like I knew people in um, my school who they were terrible they were terrible they you know they, they weren't <coughs> well behaved but there was a reason they weren't well behaved because they struggled and the yeah. supportive system was horrendous and now i've seen people go on to kind of to dark roads in their lives and i attribute that so much to the school that i was at it's this rejection this you're stupid mm -hmm. and it needs yeah. to stop it needs to be a serious revolution in the way i think people are taught you know yeah I, I think it would be great if the government i know they'll never do it but this is my this is my idea which could really help is um for the secondary schools they could build like these new secondary schools for people and you could get assessed in year six or year five and if you're at a normal mainstream school if you're not if it's not suitable for you and if you learn in different ways or you have like adhd autism or dyslexia and things like that you could join this new school and, and I, I know it sounds crazy but you could learn it could all just be like more visual and they could use youtube and they could bring like i literally learned algebra through bloody rap songs for god's sake like you could they could be quirky and crazy but if that's how they learn then that's how they learn they could bring they could make these new schools just for them people that don't fit in that other way and i think they'd learn so much more and another thing as well you know like the subjects that they teach i think it would be really good if like um say like you like biology but you only like to do with like the human body anatomy and physiology and that if the government with the GCSEs was flexible in the GC in that actual subject you see what I mean so you don't have to do all of it you could do a part of it do you see where I'm coming mm. from so you get more clever and smart yeah. in a certain like, in, the way that you want to yeah and, and learn in the way you want to learn so they, they basically give the child a more of a say of how they'd like to go about things and yeah, I think I'll be really, really good and more subjects to learn from. Mm, yeah. Because the amount of, when you think about the amount of time you, you're in school, it's like five days a week, multiple hours, nine o'clock or eight o'clock till three or four. I mean, like the amount of time you spend on subjects that either make you sad, 
make you feel like a failure, all of these things, if you, if the time that was spent on that was going towards things you're passionate about, things that make you happy, things that make you feel alive, we'd have a revolution of one, people, p- kids would not feel as low as they feel. Like right now we've got record depression rates in young men feeling lost and isolated and also a lot of mental illness with young girls as well. And a big part of that is people aren't actually told that it's actually a weird thing now to do something you actually enjoy. Like the system is built for you to kind of get used to doing things you hate. And that's just so messed up in so many ways. Yeah, and then, then and then they carry that on by saying, oh, well, sometimes if in, in life you have to do things you don't like, you know, this horror, I'm sorry, I don't really like all of that because sometimes them things that people don't want to do actually make them want to kill themselves. Mm. And that's not worth it. No, that's I hate so that mentality. true. So many people have actually, this is one thing, when you're homeschool, you will get stigma from other family members as well that make you feel like shit, you know? Like they think they know more than your own child, even though they're not witnessing what's happening every day because they want to look like, oh, my blah, 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 blah is going to a mainstream school and doing what they should be doing. And when someone decides to not follow that normal way, they think there's something wrong with you or your child. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Because they never had the guts to think there could be another way of doing something. They just think there's one way to do something and there's not. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like people, um, we are getting sti- we are getting stuff from all areas. Mm. No help, but then we're getting people either saying, "Oh, well, it's really good. Oh, I really think it's great what you're doing." The people usually say that, that what I'm doing is really good. Are the people that actually want my son to be able to be himself and learn to love himself and find passion with things that he loves? Whereas the other people are saying, "Oh no, you, he should be doing this." All they care about is exam results and what he's getting, so it makes them look good. I've decided. Mm. what else could it be yeah that's <laughs> very good point like a lot of the whole system is vanity it's like vanity metrics for parents like hmm, my son's going to oxford my son's going to cambridge or whatever it's not oh are they are they enjoying their life are they happy are they doing things they actually want to do or are they just you know flexing a shitty for school <laughs> yeah um like my son wants to do 11 plus but I never said that to him. He came to me and asked. He begged me, Mum, please, can we try and get some money together? I really want to do my 11 plus. That's different. When he went to get assessed, they were actually quite like impressed him. It was like, wow, he actually wants to be here because he said, oh, I want to be here. But I reckon a lot of them get sent there and they don't want to go and do it, you know? But their parents are forcing them to do it. I hate that. I think that's really bad. Your child should only do 11 plus or anything like that if they really want to do it. Mm. I'm completely on your page. So, like, overall, what do you think can be. I know you talked about the school in making like a, a potentially new schools for people who ha- like have dyslexia and stuff like we've talked about and things we've struggled with ourselves. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think can be done to, you know, destigmatize homeschooling, make it easier for people to homeschool and open the door for a revolution in young kids learning? Um, probably um, reach out to the young youngsters somehow. I reckon they'd. I reckon the youngsters in the schools, because I feel like the parents are too. Some of them are too brainwashed in this mentality that this needs to happen. This needs to happen. But to break that, maybe um, you need to start somehow. I don't even know how we'd do it. Like reaching out to younger children to say, you know, if you're struggling, there is another way. You don't have to go to school. You can have. You can be homeschooled. I feel like maybe if they even knew they had the option. Do you know what I mean? I never thought about that when I was going to school and I felt terrible. Oh, yeah, maybe I could be homeschooled. I didn't know it was an option. Mm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because I like even when I was growing up, I remember I had some conversations, but it was never like a real possibility for me to be homeschooled. And when I think about it, the amount of pain and suffering I was going through, I would have like homeschooling would been like the door open for me and the second I left school the second I left the education system one of the happiest days of my life ever and the ironic thing was I was with a bunch of people who were sad to leave and they were like oh no and all this and I was just in so much pain that it was just such a relief it was the incredible and like <clears throat> that's one positive thing that came for me of COVID and lockdowns was the fact that we got predicted grades and luckily some of my teachers were nice so I got good predicted grades even though I failed all the mocks not all of them I did pass some of them um, yeah. and yeah and then we, luckily it all I we all left early and it was just like Jesus sent an angel down you know <laughs> I was like oh yeah. my goodness oh yeah. um 
obviously like uh, what you were saying about before obviously like it would be good to teach parents or to somehow put information or maybe to make it easier like you said so that they know they could get funding they could get help because that's probably what happens oh my god my phone's going to turn off i'm going to quickly go and get my already charger. <laughs> i've heard of the council one time for the past t three years one time the council i've not heard since had any other support no so i think that would help like you said and if they was told, like, oh, you know, if you homeschool, you can get this and that, like, on a natural website or somewhere, so parents know, then they might think maybe, I don't know. And also, they, they don't even tell you, like, how to apply for these exams. Like, there's nothing set out of, if you do do it, this is, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's very, um, you just left there. Yeah. Me? Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Oh, you, I completely got the wrong end of the stick there and you said left. I thought you said my screen. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's, that is terrible. Like, And the, there are places in America because there'll be people who will listen and they'll be like, oh, well, we can't afford that taxpayer money. But what people need to realise, it's cheaper to give parents money than to fund your kid going to a state school. So it's not like it will mm. save... The, it will save money homeschooling. And there's places in America where 10, 15% of the population in a certain area are homeschooled. So it can be done. It's not like something that, you know, it's never been done before. There's And the success rates of homeschooled kids is, you know, in a lot of times and places is far, far greater than state schools because they don't... Sorry. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> they don't, like, they don't hate themselves. And that's a big deal, I think, like not hating yourself the radical notion of that you know <laughs> yeah learn to love yourself and i'm your authentic self i know it sounds really cringy but i'm being serious and i've been teaching my son that well, since he's been homeschooling he, i said to him it's a really good positive thing that's come out of it he knows now what his passions are what he's really interested in and he knows who he is and he knows he can be okay on his own that's actually a good strength to have mm. He doesn't have to just fit in, start, you know, you feel like he needs to change or fit into something. So, thinks for yourself. There's many good things about, yeah, being homeschooled, if people do it in the right way. I can see it going bad, though, if the parents weren't doing what they say they're going to do, you know, and they could basically neglect their kids. But then there's there's also the thing which they do in America, like Florida, pod learning is a big thing. So, this is another reason why, well, funding really needs to be increased for homeschooling, where a bunch of parents together collectively, you know their kids and everything, so you hire a private tutor, and but obviously because you're funded, this you're not using your own money, um, this mm -hmm. is money that would go towards a school anyway, and then you have them with a bunch of maybe six kids, and you know what they're getting taught, you structure their learning, obviously supportive environment, and it's a way of, you know, having best of both, but with money that isn't yours which would be used to go to school again so saving money and also meaning they're in a good environment yeah. so even if like parents out like there the mm, it, like even if parents were out there thinking oh well i can't homeschool because of this because of that you can create a system if we had real school choice in the uk where someone else can teach them but you're still big influence on it you know yeah, but that's the question. Do they want to be big influence on it? When it was when COVID happened and there was lockdowns, everyone was moaning about helping their children with home school. I'm not being mean. I'm just saying what people are doing. I think a lot of people don't want to do it. They, then there you you see other people that are pointing at people that are doing it. Mm. <laughs> that's a good point. That is a good point. There's a lot of people who, when it boils down to it, they can't be bothered. They prefer to just yeah. shift responsibility. I have the kids pop the kids out and then do a little bit at home and then shove them off at school all day. Sorry, there are parents like that. So when this, if this child then said, oh, you know, mama, I really can't handle school. Please, can you help me? No. What they're saying is, I don't want to help you. I can't be asked to help you. You're mm. not saying everyone, but some of them are like... Mm. Yeah, it takes a lot when you have a child. It's, it, there's a lot of... Mm. Um, but it's it's been an absolute pleasure, a really good conversation. I think it would have, this has definitely opened the ears up of a lot of people who were sceptical of homeschooling, who ha don't understand what's actually happening all up and down the country and the change that needs to happen, that is, we need school choice. We need people being able to have the option to homeschool their kids if they want and most importantly, not demonise those who, 
who are and actually to have a support system made in play that not only benefits the child but also saves money which is just it's the best of both and yeah homeschooling isn't for everyone we're not saying it is but the option is the key thing there an option um yeah do you have any last words There's one last thing I was going to say, sorry, if that's all right, about um, you don't need permission to homeschool, apparently. But what if you if your child is still wanting to go to school, but it feels too overwhelmed, especially with autism and that, but they still want to go in a few days a week, you can do flexi school, which is like part time schooling. But the annoying thing about that, which probably would help so many children right now, is you have to get permission from a school and they usually say no. So how because people could use that as a to go in for a couple of days to help their children socialize, but they won't usually allow it. So it's like, but you do the whole thing or you do nothing. Well, I've I've heard of that as well because yeah. I know someone who's actually does that. Um, and their actual brother and sister might be listening. So shout out if you're listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for coming on. Really do appreciate it. Where can people catch you anywhere? Your YouTube channel. Yeah, um, you can say about that. I don't want to. I'm coming here by homeschooling. <laughs> okay. Um, but thanks for coming on. Really do appreciate it. Um, if you do want me a link in the description, I will, and you guys can go check it out. Or if, if you, you don't want me to, I obviously won't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much, coming on. Really do appreciate your time. Um, make sure to share this with a friend, someone who's considering homeschooling their kids. Uh, give it a like if you're listening on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot. Give it the five stars if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and you do enjoy this conversation. Yeah, love you all and I will catch you all in the next one. Thursday, 6 o'clock next week. Peace.